Hey, thanks for joining us today. Well, we are going to be talking all about the six things that you should definitely consider when looking at a leisure travel van. If this is your first time on the channel, I want to um, invite you to subscribe because we're always talking about leisure travel vans, RVs, gear, gadgets, travel, and everything in between. So please hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. If you don't like the video, still give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Anyway, I really wanted to really touch into things that people may not even think about whenever they see a leisure travel van. Well, maybe they're only seeing them on YouTube right now because they are basically so scarce you cannot go to a dealer and do walkthroughs. You can't get in and, and, and see them, see just really how big they are. So today we are going to be talking about that. Now keep in mind, this is also going to apply to anything built on those chassis like the Winnebago Navions, the Airstream Atlas, or the Tiffin Wayfarers, or some of the popular ones. So basically all of these things are going to apply to those as well. But again, thanks for joining me and let's get into it right now. All right, number one, it is a really, really tight space. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see a lot of tours and different things, and Leisure Travel Van has some of the, the very best um, product tour videos of any company that I've ever seen. In fact, that's what really sold me on Leisure Travel Vans, uh, was their, you know, Dean and the Leisure Travel Van YouTube channel, right? Uh, but again, you know, YouTube can be a little bit deceiving. You really, really have to step in into these things to really understand just how tight they are. They are a very, very small space. And in fact, um, when we were watching YouTube videos before we ever stepped in one, we were considering a different floor plan than what we actually got. Uh, that is because when we stepped in the floor plan in person that we thought we wanted, it was just a little bit too claustrophobic for uh, for Janet and I. So we ended up choosing the FX, which is basically the, the widest open uh, floor plan that you can get. And that's what I personally like. Some people don't mind the, you know, like the twin bed model, for example. It's basically, you know, two rooms with the bathroom in the middle. So you got to be thinking about such a tight space. And if you're going to be traveling for a long amount of time, you're going to be in that tight space with your significant other. So you also got to keep that in mind because, you know, there's going to be times whenever you're going to have to shimmy around each other, or if you have dogs, different things like that, is that the space is uh, probably not exactly what you're used to. Now then, if you've RV'd before in a big travel trailer or a big class A, a fifth wheel, those things are, you know, are, are much more manageable when it comes to space. But the leisure travel van, you've really, really got to be thinking about how small the space actually is. And that is going to dictate a lot of other things that we're going to get into here in just a moment. But keep it in mind, it's a very small space. All right, number two of what you should consider it's actually a lot easier to drive than what you would think. It can be kind of daunting. Now, now keep it in mind, it's an 11,000 pound, you know, uh, 10 and a half foot tall um, RV with blind spots everywhere. And so you've got to also keep that in mind. But don't be intimidated about driving a motorhome because it's really kind of like a big SUV and the Mercedes-Benz chassis and the new Ford Transit chassis, they have things that you're used to in your car, such as adaptive cruise control. Uh, my leisure travel van has heated seats, it, you know, electronic steering. It is really comfortable to drive. But once you figure out how to use the mirrors and that there are blind spots, you don't have a rear view mirror, um, and unfortunately, uh, you know, they don't come from the factory with a uh, rear view camera even. You have to get those installed aftermarket if you want one. Um, but you, you just got to keep that in mind and you've got to drive accordingly because it's not like your car where you can just zip in and out of lanes. For example, if you are about to miss your exit, don't try it. Go around to the next one because you will not make it, um, for, you know, not safely anyway, by trying to switch abruptly in a leisure travel van. So you just always have to be uh, mindful of what's ahead. And so whenever we're going on trips and everything, I always make sure that I've either got my, my Google map or whatever it is that I'm using. And I'm well aware of how far the exit is that I'm needing so that I can get over in the right hand lane way before it's time to, that I actually need to, so that I don't 
worry about missing the exit. Now then, if you want to know more about driving the Leisure Travel Van, I actually made a video all about that, and I'll link that right there. So be sure to check that out as well. But it is not near as intimidating as you may think it is. It's very comfortable, and with the newer chassis, it is like driving uh, just a big SUV with all of the creature comforts that you would expect in a luxury vehicle. Okay, so number two was all about how easy it was to drive, which is a huge benefit when it comes to this size of an RV. Now let's get down to some of the uh, not so good things about this size of RV. Well, the, uh, the water tanks, for example, your black tank, your gray tank, your fresh water tank, they are small. They are really small. They are in the leisure travel vans anyway. Some floor plans have some bigger, some smaller. Uh, in mine in particular, I only have a 24 gallon uh, fresh water tank. So that is not much. So if you plan on doing some boondocking, um, if you really plan on using your RV off grid, which you can, you just have to plan accordingly and understand that the, the boondocking capabilities are not fantastic. They're not, not great like a, you know, a travel trailer built for that that's gonna have much larger tanks that you can stay out there for more days. Now, a lot of people, they love to take showers and showers are going to be your worst enemy when it comes to boondocking because it takes water out of the fresh uh, water tank that you need and it just puts it in the gray tank that becomes full that you're going to have to dump before you run out of out of space. In fact, uh, we have a new podcast and invite you to listen to that. And I was interviewing one of my employees, actually, that had rented an RV and took off on a 35-day trip. And they weren't even told about dumping the black tank and things like that. And they said that at one point, all of the gray tank water cut started coming up through the shower and is like three inches of water in the shower. And so if you're not anywhere where you can safely dump that gray tank, then yeah, that can be a problem. So keep that in mind that the water tanks and the liquid tanks are small. Black tank, that means how long you can use your bathroom. Your gray tank, how much water are you putting down those drains to the shower and the sink? And then of course, how much fresh water do you have, right? And so keep that in mind. Now let's talk about battery capacity. The standard leisure travel van and most RVs these days come with two, say, AGM batteries. So that they have 200 amp hours of battery that comes standard from the leisure travel van factory. But if those are AGMs, that's not 200 amp hours. That is 100 amp hours. And I see too many posts of brand new leisure travel van owners of people saying, I'm running out of battery. I'm running out. I left my fan on all night or, or what may have you. So I made a choice early on that I never wanted to have a battery problem. So I upgraded to a Lithionics uh, 315 amp hour battery, which is basically you can use about 95% of that. So I have about 300 amp hours that I can use. That's going to last me, you know, as much as I need. And I've got solar. I've got a generator so I can recharge that thing very easily. Now then, I also can run my air conditioner off of that battery as well. And if you want to learn all about that, I'll put that link right there where you can learn about our lithium story. But just know this, if you're using the factory AGM batteries that come with your RV, uh, you can only use 50% of the capacity. So if it says 200 amp hours, being two 100 amp hour batteries, you only have uh, 100 amp hours total out of those two batteries. And that, you know, depending on how you use it and you're boondocking, that can go pretty quick. So you may want to consider uh, about upgrading to lithium batteries. And so uh, if you want to boondock, a leisure travel van is going to just have shorter times that you can boondock because of the water tanks. And then if you don't up, upgrade to uh, lithium batteries, then, you know, uh, you could also run out of power, which it be no fun, right? Um, and again, it's all about how are you going to use your coach. If you think you're going to be in RV parks all the time, don't worry about it. It's going to be a, a, a no-brainer. It's going to be perfect for you. But anyway, that's the number three things you need to know about purchasing a leisure travel van. All right, this is going to be one thing that if uh, you purchase a leisure travel van in this day and age where you can't really see one, get your hands on one, and really get to walk around and see exactly what you can bring on your awesome camping trips, well, you're going to be very disappointed 
in storage and what stuff that you can bring. So a couple of uh, limitations with a leisure travel van. One's going to be weight, okay? So uh, my particular unit, I have a 1,502 OCCC, which is occupant and cargo carrying capacity. That means how much weight of stuff can I put in that leisure travel van? That counts myself, Janet, the dogs, uh, water, all of those things, right? All of your liquids, things like that. And then you start putting in your stuff that you're going to bring. So if you think, well, I'm going to bring stand up paddle boards, I'm going to bring all, all these camping chairs, I'm going to bring a solo stove. This is probably not the RV for you. Uh, number six, though, of my on my list here, if you stick around till the end, uh, I have a little solution that could help you possibly. But anyway, so if you think you're going to be bringing a bunch of stuff, you're not. This is not the RV for you. And so outside storage is extremely limited. In fact, our camping chairs, I actually have you know, I found something uh, absolutely fantastic. It is expensive, but it is great. It's called a Nemo Stargazer, and I'll put a link to uh, those as well there. In fact, you can, if you jump on Pagosa Supply, uh, co, you can see everything that I carry in my leisure travel van. But anyway, so we found these Nemo Stargazers, and they literally fold up to, you know, about half the size of a normal camp chair. So that is a, a fantastic win. So but yeah, you're not going to be carrying a lot of stuff. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about a leisure travel van and think you're going to be carrying around, you know, propane stoves and all of these things because you're not. It's just no room in there. Uh, you can find room. I carry a Blackstone with me, but it takes up basically one whole bay. Anyway, so that's something you need to consider. All right, number five, the kitchen, tiny. I mean, tiny. You're going to find yourself with very little room to do any prep work or anything. And it's not a big deal as long as you know it and you plan accordingly. And so we are being, we've been able to, you know, really get kitchen things that don't take up a lot of room. For example, my Keurig machine, I got to have my coffee. Um, and so we found a really small Keurig that absolutely I love and it fit, actually fits behind the faucet uh, so it doesn't really take up any room. Uh, then of course there's the Pagosa Supply Co um, chop block uh, and sink cover that serves two purposes. Uh, but once you start getting stuff on that counter and then you need to use your propane stove and you you know, when you pull up the, the, the glass on that, you just lose that counter space. I mean, it is tiny. So just keep that in mind that you're not going to be, uh, you don't have near the room that you either have at home or in other, you know, a larger travel trailer, different things like that. I mean, it is tiny and it can become very cluttered too. I find ourselves on camping trips sometimes. I mean, just a couple of glasses and cups and, you know, coffee cups and then you know if you've got uh, some fruit bananas or different thing all of a sudden you have zero room on that counter so just understand that that the kitchen is even smaller than you think it is all right number six is actually going to help with a couple of problems but it is also going to be a burden as well and that is should you take a tow car well, a lot of people get the size of the leisure travel van thinking that they don't need an extra tow car. So if you have a class A, I mean, you can't just take that around sightseeing and everything. I mean, I guess you can, but probably not a very fun experience. Now, the leisure travel van is 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 great. You can take it around. You can take it into downtown areas, take it in and, and fit it in parking lots and, and things like that. It's just not terribly optimal for us and so I always say I think a tow car with a leisure travel van if you're going to be doing a lot of sightseeing and a different different stuff like that or staying put for a period of time to where you set camp up and you want to tear it down every time you want to go to the grocery store or go sightseeing or or go out to eat or something like that so having a tow car can solve that problem now there is a weight limit on that and i made videos about that as well i will link those there as well so you can see what tow cars i suggest from leisure travel vans or any of the mercedes-benz sprinters um, but Here's the upside to having that tow car, even though it would be a pain to drag it around and everything, and expensive to put all of the, the things uh, in it to make it towable, like a braking system and tow bar and all of that good stuff. But here's what's great about it. 
if you get one that's light enough, say like the Subaru Crosstrek is the one that I really suggest. Subaru Crosstrek, you're going to be able to, to carry a lot of stuff. So you can put in that solo stove. You could get that foldable um, stand-up paddleboard, put it in the back of that thing. It basically becomes a cargo trailer for you that if you do want to take a bunch of outdoor toys and play stuff or or bikes all of those different things that you can totally do that with your tow car so you're going to have a lot more carrying capacity because it's not going to be all of that stuff's not going to be added to your weight inside the coach to your OCCCC then it just becomes part of your combined gross vehicle weight rating which is GVW something anyway so you just got to be mindful on I, I say you can't have any more than 4200 pounds and that's kind of max for a leisure travel van the you know you'll see on the videos they say a 5,000 pound tow hitch yes it has a 5,000 pound tow hitch but you can't tow 5,000 pounds okay that's just what the tow hitch is rated at the coach is whenever you add everything up what you got in there and everything you definitely don't want to have 5,000 pounds pulling behind you it's just not safe of course you can pull it it'll pull it the engine's strong enough but can you stop it and is the components is it is it you know geared to carry 5,000 pounds as far as pulling stopping all of those different things Anyway, so having a tow car can be a huge benefit and also a burden. So anyway, that's my thoughts on six things you should definitely know about a leisure travel van. Love to hear your thoughts and comments below as well. Now then, if this is your first time on the channel, again, please subscribe because we are always talking about leisure travel vans. So if you're in the market for a leisure travel van, I'm trying to give as much as possible information possible as I can because they are just not out there to look at. You can't walk in, into three or four floor plans like I had the benefit of doing. And like I said, we changed which floor plan we we're get because I thought I saw a video and I thought I was going to get this one. Ended up getting an FX. So anyway, but that's it for this week. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.